did you spot my mistake yesterday? I boobed. I made a mistake. So did you see yesterday's video in the cards up above where I made my beautiful ballet dancer who turned out so so much better than I was hoping for but as some of you rightly pointed out it's not so easy to follow along because some dummy kept her hands out of the frame for the most important bit the making the armature of the doll. So I know it's a Friday and I don't make videos on a Friday so today's a special treat. I thought I'd set up again and re-record me making an armature for a ballet dancer. So all I used for this was the garden wire that I got from Tesco's that I reviewed in a previous video, my jewellery cutting pliery thingies and a little bit of core wool. And two cameras to make sure that hopefully you get to see exactly what I'm doing. So let's see what I did to make the armature for my small person, my ballet dancer. So this is the wire from Tesco's, the garden wire that I reviewed in a previous video and you're just gonna take off a nice long length of this. Take off more than you need because it's easier to cut it down than it is to magically grow more wire. And the first piece is going to be the head, shoulders and arms, so we're going to fold it in half. This first piece is going to be the chin, this top where we've folded it, so you can fold it over fairly tightly and give it a few twists. So all you do is hold between your non-dominant hand and twist down the length. You've just got over a couple of inches. As I say, this is going to be the head and the chin and the neck here. Fold the wires up to become the shoulders. And the second piece of wire you've got, roughly find the centre, slip this over the neck. So you've now got a U shape over here and we're going to hold again with a non-dominant hand and take an arm and a body and go fully around twice so you've got some nice wide shoulders and the same with the other side you can either flip it over or if you can use both hands just hold this time with my dominant hand and I'm gonna twist it fully around two times again and I can always fold better with one hand than the other. So that shoulder's slightly bigger. So I'm just going to quickly add one more twist in. And they're about even. And so head and neck, shoulders and torso. So we're just going to fold this in to become her waist. twisting a few times. So for the head and neck we want a good couple of centimetres to be the neck here and I'm just going to fold down and out for the chin which looks a little odd at this stage but this is so we can build up her head. I'm going to figure out a rough length of these arms which is just going to be a bit longer than the head easier to fold a hand first. So fold roughly what you're going to want the hand to be. This is a nice soft wire so I can fold it by hand. If you need to you could use pliers. I have needle nose pliers that really help getting right in with the wires and and because we're going to want the limbs to be so skinny, rather than wrap this wire round the arm a little bit as I would do, this would make a kind of thicker wrist. I'm just going to try and trim it as flush to the wire as I can. We don't want any ends sticking out, but just so that we're not adding bulk. 
and I'm going to eyeball another arm. Could measure them. It would probably make sense to measure them, but I'm just going to eyeball them. And again, bend in a wee hand. Snip as close to the wire as you can so there's not too much excess. And the same with the legs. Because there's going to be a tutu, the legs probably don't need to be as long as you think they do, but you can make them longer and it gives it an elegant look. We're just going to fold out some feet. And that's your armature ready for wrapping. And you're just going to want to use as fine strands, pieces of your core wool or your coloured roving or tops works really well for this because it's easier to handle. You will have probably lines where you've wrapped it in your final product, but for a lot of wool wrapped wire sculptures, that's what people are looking for. And I don't find I need any kind of tacky stuff to get it to hold. I'll just give it a couple of wraps at the very end and then keeping even pressure and an even overlap just wind all the way down. And I can smooth out any lumps from my ineffective weaving <clears throat> when it comes to the felting. Just gonna tuck it through her chest. and felt it in place. No need for any sticky substances. Another thing you can do to make it even easier is hitch through an area like this and then when I wrap it's holding on to itself so I can apply a little more force and get a really thin wind. And then I just have to do a couple of stabs at the end to hold it. And the same with the legs, start at the top or the bottom, whichever you find easier. There's no chest loop to go through here, but the same, I can go round his torso a bit and let it catch on his legs so that it's anchored at this point, and then wind down the legs. It's easier if you keep moving your thumb down to hold closer to where it is, especially because this wire is fairly weak, so it will bend a little bit if you put too much force on it. Anchor it on at the pelvis and try and keep a nice smooth even wrap all the way down. This gets easier with practice. And if you had any excess at the bottom, you could just pull it off or snip it off there and finish off.
over the chest and shoulders it's good to do a bit of a cross your heart to build up a bit of bulk here this builds up the shoulders a little and builds up the chest and as she's wearing her tutu we don't need to worry too much about the body just a couple of wraps to give it something to cling to and a chest area boobs we're just going to roll a little piece pop it into place and you can do a little cross your heart again to hold it on before you felt it in place winding up the neck only want a couple of winds in the neck we want to keep that nice and fine filling in the area of the loop here round about her chin and then building this head piece up in a kind of bizarre figure eight See how the chin's given her a rounded kind of chin shape already. I just want to give her a bit more forehead. And when we cover it with the flesh colour, we'll hide that little bit of wire poking out from her chin. And then you're just going to felt that to smooth build up the muscles. I just wanted to talk about her body position as well while we were here. She has a lovely arabesque arm position. It's a little known fact, but I did ballet when I was a kid. Um, so when thinking of positioning the legs, her right leg is pointing down, she's on point there, and her left leg is out behind her. But the temptation is to just stick a leg out, straight out backwards. But for a more realistic ballet dancer, if you're putting your leg out to the back, it would be up and out to the back. So it's important to think of the shape of your body and how that goes as well. You would raise the knee slightly, turn, turn the hips out to get the leg to go out. But anyway, good, good couple of hours felting her all over, building up muscles, thickening up the thigh, thickening up the calf, thickening up the arm slightly, and you've pretty much your little dancers ready. Thank you so much for bearing with me while I make my mistakes. We're all human. Um, I hope that was a lot clearer for how you make your armature for small people. Obviously the lengths of the legs and the torso and everything all dependent on what you want. But as this is a slightly cartoony character, the lengths and the sizes are not exactly in proportion. If you're looking for a proportional scale, I'll link to some articles from artists talking about basically how many head widths for each different part of the body and you can work on from that. But when I'm making something 
something a bit more cartoony. I prefer to just eyeball it. And if you mess up in any way, this armature is not having to bear any weight. So you could easily add a little bit of extra fibres to the bottom to make the legs longer or the arms longer or fold over or cut off a bit of wire to make them a bit shorter. But really, once the tutu's on, that hides a multitude of sins. But anyway, I'm Pam Duffy. I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration. I make Eatsy Tips videos every Monday, every Wednesday and Thursday. I have needle felting supplies, equipment and tutorials. And every Sunday we have a live stream where we can all get to chat together. So I look forward to you joining me on any of these days. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget, click on my wee face to subscribe. Check out the video with the rest of Making the Ballerina. Give us a thumbs up. Tell me I'm a doofus in the comments below and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much.